the other students will uh, join us. So let me present my screen. Today, we will uh, look at sampling distributions. And I hope that uh, you have received the data set that I sent earlier today. Today, we shall look at sampling distributions. Sampling. I don't know why my cursor is not writing. <laughs> or maybe, is it my network? There is a problem. Maybe I will uh, I will leave, then I join again. So just give me a few seconds or a few minutes because I need to leave and then I join again. Something is happening to my cursor. It is not responding. So I try to leave, then I join again. And now my screen is blank. OK, so let us continue. I think now my laptop is fine. I present my screen. 
I closed some uh, open pages, so I hope now it will be fine. So I was saying, okay, yeah, now my cursor is responding. I was saying that today we shall look at sampling distributions. Sampling distributions. distributions. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, just as uh, Suppose the government wanted to determine the mean income of all households. Uh, so, you know, it is not easy to walk from house to house and get, trying to get that data. It is not easy to interrogate the whole population. So what would be ideal is for uh, a few surveyors to obtain information from a sample of households. So maybe uh, using proper scientific sampling techniques, then it should be it, uh, it should be possible to identify the particular households that are to be considered, or the particular households that should be earmarked for questioning to determine what. Uh, the, their mean income, what their mean incomes are. So, uh, sci scientifically, then we talk of uh, surveying a random sample of houses. It has to be random. No element of bias should be incurred. For example, if I say, that I, I want to sample only households in Nairobi. That is not random because I've, it's, it's a prejudiced decision. I've decided that I want to consider only Nairobi. But if we were to obtain uh, proper results, then we should consider how we would get uh, households in all the 47 counties, and this should be done randomly. Now, so suppose uh, we get the first random sample. Of course, it will be a sample of a number of households. So if we get sample one, maybe if we are considering Kenya, sample one, and uh, let's say in sample one, we are considering 10,000 households, 10,000 households. And then we get the sample mean, which is denoted by X bar one. It means that we add all the incomes for the 10,000 households and divide by 10,000. So suppose we did that and we found that the average or the mean household income is uh, six. We are being optimistic, so we are saying six million 
let's say 552 and 700 from the first sample. Then suppose we get another sample, again, uh, made up of 10,000 houses chosen at random. And then we find that the second sample gives us the second sample gives us uh, shillings six million five seventy three five seventy three and one hundred. And then let's we, we consider another sample again from the same same population. And we get maybe shillings six four nine seven six four nine seven eight hundred. So uh, why, why, why are we getting these samples? If we get the first sample mean, the sample mean represents, is an estimate of the population mean. So if we obtain the first sample mean as 6 million and those other fig figures, then we are trying to say that the population mean income, maybe per year or per particular period is 6 million and the rest of the figures. So these sample means are estimates of the population mean. Now, uh, uh, remember, so, uh, yeah, from, from what we have been discussing in the past, we've been saying that suppose we want to get the ages of some young people. So we, we have been saying that let the age be represented by X. So, and if we are considering maybe uh, students in grade, pupils in grade four, or grade five there, maybe they're around 11 years, 12 years, 10 years old. So we have been saying that X is a random variable. Why? Why has it been a random variable? Because it takes different values. That's why we've been saying that X is a random variable. Now you can also see that X bar, X bar, is behaving as a random variable. X bar is behaving as a random variable. Why? Because the values it takes whenever we pick different samples, because the values it takes whenever we pick different samples, the values keep on changing. So X bar is a random variable. And remember, when we were talking about X, uh, we, we said that using X, we can either have a PDF or a PMF. We were just trying to say that it follows, the random variable follows a particular distribution. So now, because this X bar is also behaving like a random variable, actually it is a random variable depending on the samples that we pick. Then X bar being a random variable also has a probability distribution. So X bar one is a random variable and because it is a random variable, then it has a probability distribution. So what we want to do 
is to describe the distribution. We want to describe the distribution of the sample mean X bar. We have said that X bar is a random variable and since it is a random variable, then it has a probability distribution. So we would just like to describe the distribution of the sample mean X bar. Now, uh, how do we usually calculate sample mean? How do we usually calculate sample mean X bar? How do we usually calculate sample mean X bar? This is very simple. We just, we just sum all the observations. So X bar is just given by the summation of all the observations, sum of observations observations divided by sum of observations divided by number of observations this is how we usually calculate x bar number of observations So let's just see a very simple example. Uh, I know many of us know how to calculate sample mean, but we can just uh, look at a simple example. So I refer you to your data set one, which uh, I also want to display mine data set one. So in data set one, let me just try to expand that a little bit so that it's visible to everyone. So we have data set one here, which I have just sent to you. Uh, so we have uh, a number of observations here. There are six. The first one is eight, then seven, 11, eight, 12, then 14. So consider, this is our example, Consider a sample of size six. Example, consider a sample of size six drawn from a population, drawn from a population Consider a sample of size six drawn from a population as given in data set one, as given in data set one, then we need to get the sample mean, the sample mean, X bar. We need to get X bar, which is the sample mean. So we know that this will just be summation of all those data items, starting with eight up to starting with eight up to the last one, which was 14. And then we divide by six. And so this will give us 10. So obtaining sample mean is not difficult. We simply sum the observations and then uh, we divide by the number of observations. Now I remember 
one of you had asked what is the importance of uh, sample no of variance of variance and i had said that uh, variance is a measure of dispersion from the mean so it uh, it caters for the error in card so after looking at sample vari sample sample mean now we we want to look at sample variance sample variance and we want to see how we can calculate sample variance how we can calculate sample variance of course we use a formula to calculate sample variance s squared is given by 1 over n minus 1 summation xi squared minus n x bar squared. So this is how we calculate variance. Sample variance. There is a difference between sample variance and variance in general. Sample variance, of course, uh, is the variance due to obtaining a sample. And when we just talk about variance in general, most of the time, we are referring to population variance and the formulae for the two are different as we shall see as we go along. So sample variance is given by one of one over n minus one. Open the bracket summation x i squared minus n x bar squared. Let's look at an example so that we see how to calculate this sample variance. Uh, example, find the variance, find the variance and standard deviation of sample data set to find the variance and standard deviation of sample data set 2. So let us see how to calculate variance. So data set 2, let me also show you mine so that we are reading from the same page. Uh. Isn't it the same same one? So data set two. Data set two, we have uh, eight observations, 21, 17, 13, 25, 9, 19, 6, and 10. 9, 19, 6, and 10. So they are uh, eight observations. So we want to calculate that variance, for the sample variance for that data. So first and foremost, we need to calculate X bar, X bar, so X bar, we know that we just add all the observations and divide by eight. And if we do that for that particular data set, we find that X bar is 15. And then now to get the sample variance, we just substitute 
in uh, what I will call equation one. We will substitute in equation one. And so we shall have one over seven. Why is it seven? Because of n minus one. That is eight minus one into Uh, if we look at equation one, it is summation of xi squared. It means that we have we take the element, the data values. The first one is 21, so we square it, add two. The next one is 17 squared. And then we keep on doing this up to the last value which is up to the last value, which is 10 squared. Minus. So if I if I'm. Then I need to introduce another bracket, a bigger one. Minus N, N is eight. And X bar is uh, 15 squared. And if we perform this operation, we get 43.14. 43.14. And so, the sample deviation, which is the square root of the sample variance, the sample standard deviation is 6.57. Sample standard deviation is 6.57. So what are we saying here? Suppose uh, we had that data represented weights, the weights, then we would, we would be saying that from the sample data, the mean weight is 15 plus or minus, plus or minus the sample standard deviation, which is 6.57. So this is how we make use of population variance or sample variance. So it means that the mean can lie anywhere between 15 plus or minus that though this though this value we've got of 6.57 is really too large a sample standard deviation compared to 15 but that is how that is just to explain how we use population or sample variance so we have looked at this case where we have data which is not grouped. Because if you look at data set two, data set two, we have data like 21 is occurring only once, 17 is occurring once, 13 is occurring once, and so on. So that is ungrouped data. What happens? when we have grouped data. How do we calculate sample variance if we, we are given grouped data? When we are given grouped data, the sample variance is given by 1 over n minus 1 1 over n minus 1 into summation over i, summation over i up to n of f of i x i squared.
squared minus n x bar squared. So this is the formula that we use when we have grouped data. When we have grouped data. Uh, the only new term that appears there is f, f of i. Of course, f of i represents the frequency, the frequency per group. Now, what I will do, I will uh, send an exercise to the class reps for you to practice how to use that formula. I will send an exercise so that you can use that formula. I will send some data. Now, uh, when I started off, I said that X bar behaves like, or rather, it is a random variable. Why is it a random variable? Because its value keeps on changing depending on the sample that you take. If you take samples, let's say six times, you will find that all the values are different, though they are a bit close. So since X is a random variable, then it has a distribution. So now we would like to look at subtitle sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar subtitle sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar So what is this? If we can just have a small introduction, it's the probability distribution. It's the probability distribution of all possible values of all possible values of the random variable x bar of the random variable x bar computed from a sample of size n computed from a sample of size small n small letter n from a population from a population with mean mu and variance sigma squared from a population with mean mu and variance sigma squared now uh I say that uh, we usually have scientific methods of uh, obtaining samples so that uh, an element of bias is not incurred. So uh, if, we, if we are given a sample, or rather, if we are given a population, we may be required to draw samples from the population. We may be required to draw samples from a particular given population. So there are, uh, we, 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 we want to look at uh, sampling. 
with replacement or without replacement. We want to look at two basic techniques of drawing samples from uh, from a given population and we are saying that we want to sample with replacement or without replacement and so what is this what am i trying to say when i talk about with replacement or without replacement when we when we talk about with replacement it means that you pick an item and you return it back to the population when we talk about without replacement once you've picked an item into the sample you don't return it back so let us look at the first case sampling wr using an example so that it can become clearer So we want to look at sampling WR. We write draw samples of size two, draw samples of size two WR with, with replacement. Draw samples of size two with replacement from population two, three, four. So suppose we had a very small population like this, made up of only three items, and we want to draw samples of size two without, with replacement, WR, with replacement. And we are drawing samples of size two. So if we are drawing samples of size two, what does that mean? It means that our sample size, anytime I talk about small letter N, know that I'm referring to sample size. Our sample size is two. So if we draw with replacement, now we start drawing or picking for that matter, then it means I can pick a two with a two, or we pick a two with a three. Okay, let me just explain the first one. Why, why, how come we can pick a two and a two? Because if I pick two for the first time, I'm supposed to return it back. That is why it is with replacement. And so if we return it back, then we still have another chance of picking the same, same two. Or we could have picked two with three, or we can pick two with four. We can also pick three with two, or we pick three with three, or three with four. We can also pick four with two, or four with three, or four with four. So these are the possible number of samples that we can have from this population of size three. <coughs> uh, actually, so if we are picking with replacement, from this population of size three, we see that we, we are getting uh, nine samples, nine samples, each of size two. And remember the other day, I mentioned something about combinations and uh, permutations. So actually, the number of uh, samples that we pick are a permutation. A permutation of what? Capital N always represents the population size. 
capital N is always the population size and small n is sample size, which is equal to nine. So, a capital N uh, capital N raised to small n gives us the number of samples that we expect if we are picking with replacement. And you can see that in that particular example, we have obtained nine samples. So you see, uh, each of the samples has a sample mean. Like if we consider the first sample, two plus two divided by two is two. What about the last one? Four plus four divided by two is four. So each of them has a sample mean. Now, uh, so which one is this? Okay, uh, so first I'm explaining WR and WOR. Now, let us now sample WOR without replacement from the same same population of size three from the same same population of size three so if we are so if i pick a two and then i put it aside and i want samples of size two once we picked a two and we put it aside then I can only pick a three or we could have a two with four. Because once we've picked an, uh, one of the elements in the population, we put it aside. We don't return it to the population. So if you pick a two, it can go with a three or a four. Now, and uh, if we pick a three, if we pick a three, then we put it aside. Then uh, we can only have a three with a two, which has already been picked there. Or we can have three with a four. So if we pick a four, and we put it aside, then we can have a four with a two, which has already been picked. Or we can have a four with a three, which has already been picked. So in some books, you'll, he you'll see, if you read some books, you'll see that uh, they say that sampling without replacement, for sampling without replacement, the order of picking does not matter. But for sampling with replacement, the order matters. Mm, so you can see that when we sample WOR for a population of size three, we are getting three different samples of size two. Uh, and so And so this is this is one of my students also. Um I'm willing to inquire about the cut.
okay, that was uh, one of my students. They, they are about to do exams, so we need to attend to them. Uh, okay, so I was saying, um, yeah, I was saying that when we have sampling WOR, like now for this population of size three, we have three different samples. And uh, for this one, then uh, to, to identify the number of samples that you expect to come up with, we have capital N combination, small n, small n, and if you remember what I was trying to explain the other day, uh, so in our case, capital N is three, which represents the population size, and our sample size is two. So, ah, sorry, what have I written there? I've written R. So it is three combination two, and I remember, we were advising each other how to do it on the calculator. But if we don't do it using the calculator, that is three factorial over two factorial, one factorial, two factorial multiplied by one factorial. And this is just three. It gives us three. And so you can see that uh, the, the number of samples that we obtain are three. Okay, now let us look at an example whereby we will draw samples. Uh, we will draw samples and then we get the sampling distribution of the sample means. Uh, alternatively, Well, it is fine, it is fine. Yeah, so let's look at the next example. Consider the population, consider the population two, three, four, and five. Consider the population two, three, four, and five. So the, the first part of the question requires you to draw samples of size two WR. Draw samples of size two WR. Draw samples of size two WR. But to obtain the sampling distribution of the sample mean X bar. Obtain the sampling distribution of the sample mean X bar. So we want to draw samples of size two WR and we have two, three, four, and five. So of course we shall start with two, 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 three, two, four, two, five. I have uh, a slide on this. So let me present it. Uh, where is it? So here it is. We, we, our population is two, three, is made up of two, three, four, and five. So if we want to draw samples of size two with replacement, then we know that we can get two with two, two with three, two with four, and two with five. 
When we go to three, we can draw three with two, three with three, three with four, and three with five. When we pick four first, it, it can go with two, four, and three, four and four, four and five. Likewise to five, which can go with two, three, four, and five. So those are the samples that we can obtain. And you can see that uh, they should be 16 because the population is size four. Four raised to power two is 16. And then the second part of the question requires us to obtain the sampling distribution of the sample mean X bar. So first we need to calculate X bar, sample mean. So for the first sample, its sample mean is two. For the second sample, two plus three divided by two is 2.5. Two plus four divided by two is three. The last one, five plus five divided by two is five. Second last one, five plus four divided by two is 4.5. So we have all these sample means. And each of them is equally likely. That is, uh, each of them has a probability of 1 over 16. Each of them, because there are 16 possible outcomes. So, this is the probability distribution of the samples which have been drawn. So from this is where now we can get the sampling distribution of the sample means. You see like uh, we have 2.5 here, we have 2.5 here, we have 4.5 there, 4.5 there. These are the sample means. So we want to see how they are distributed. And that is what will give us the sampling distribution of the sample means. So let me present the next one. So now here, what you can see, this is the sampling distribution of the sample means. What have we done? Two occurred only once. So its probability is 1 over 16. 2.5 occurred twice from the previous slide. So 2.5 occurs twice. So we add 1 over 16 and 1 over 16, we get 2 over 16. 3 occurred, a sample mean of 3 occurred three times. So we have 3 over 16. 3.5 occurred four times. So 1 over 16 times 4 is 4 over 16. And this and so this is what we call the sampling distribution of the sample means. And so you see that uh, the probability of getting a sample mean of 3.5 is the highest because it gives us a probability of 0 0.25. The other probabilities are less than 0 0.25. So I'll just give you an exercise. From what we have done, so in the exercise, you can obtain uh, the uh, now you can do you can obtain the samples and the sampling distribution of the sample means, but now you draw the samples 
without replacement. What I'm saying is that from this population of two, three, four, five, now draw samples without replacement and then obtain the sampling distribution of the sample means. So you'll go through the same steps. The only difference is that now you are considering the case for W O R, not W R. Okay. I want to use another slide. Uh, so let us just look at a few notations. Notations, you know now, we are uh, we we are becoming more and more knowledgeable in uh, matters statistics and so we need to talk statistical terms statistical terms so let us just look at notations type of distribution type of distribution this is one of our sub title the type of distribution so suppose we have the type of distribution there and then we have a, uh, a another column for the mean, the notation for the mean, and we have another column for the notation for the variance, and another one for the notation of the standard deviation. Standard deviation standard deviation. So uh, suppose we have a population, a population, I will just write it in short, population. So how do we usually denote the population mean? By now you know that so the population mean is denoted by mu. What about population variance? It is denoted by sigma squared. And what about population standard deviation? It is just denoted by sigma. And if we have a sample, what about for a sample? For a sample, The sample mean we know is denoted by X bar and the sample variance is denoted by small letter S squared and the sample standard deviation is denoted by small letter S. For the third one, Sampling distribution of sample means. Please write that. Sampling distribution of sample means. So that is the type of distribution. Sampling distribution of sample means. How do we denote the mean? We denote the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means by mu x bar mu 
subscript x bar and how do we denote so what do we call this mu x bar we call it the mean of all sample means we call it the mean of all sample means what about uh, how do we denote the variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means we denote it by sigma subscript subscript x bar squared sigma x bar squared and we refer to it as variance of all sample means it is the variance of all sample means denoted by sigma x bar squared and then for its standard deviation we refer to, of course it is sigma x bar we always take the square root for the standard deviation and we usually refer to this one as the standard error standard error of all sample means standard error of all sample means so you will find us we shall be referring to those terms frequently 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 we shall be referring to those terms uh, so we need to note something we need to note that one mu X bar you can hear me.
Okay, now I am back. I think it was uh, the Wi-Fi which had a problem, not the electricity. As I told the class rep. So now I'm back. Sorry for that. It happened also in my previous class for the day. And so where were we? Are you seeing my screen? I was uh, explaining. Let me look at the unread messages first. I know people are wondering. I look at the messages first. OK, I will share my screen. I will share it. I'm just trying to look at the messages. Uh, I'm back. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are notified. OK, so now let me share my screen. Uh, so that we continue. I can see somebody was somebody was asking something about not so I will repeat from there. So I was saying after we have those notations. After we have. Those notations, then I was saying that we need to note. Uh, that. Mu X bar is equal to mu. You see, the first mu x bar, this is uh, the mean of all the sample means. The mean of all the sample means. You know you can be asked to calculate the mean of all the sample means. And even you can, uh, with the example that we have done, and the one that I told you to do using the uh, as an exercise WOR. You can also try to see for yourself. If you get the mean of all the sample means, you'll find that it is just. Uh, and it is this one. Sorry, uh, the one I'm, I'm circling. If you if you calculate the mean of all the sample means, you'll find that it is just equal to the population mean. Which one? This one. Population mean mu. And then uh, the standard error sigma x bar is given by sigma over square root n. Square, of course, n is the sample size. But this sigma I'm talking about is the population standard deviation the population standard deviation. And population standard deviation comes, comes from population variance, sigma squared. How do we calculate population variance sigma squared? It is equal to one 
over capital N. Remember capital N always represents the population size. One over capital N summation Xi capital Xi minus mu mu the population mean mu squared but when we are calculating it we don't go through all those steps because when we expand that expression we just get one over capital n summation sorry that is summation xi squared summation xi squared minus mu squared so when we expand that expression we get this so usually when we calculate population variance then we just want to use one over capital n summation xi squared where these xi's refer to the values in the population minus population mu squared. Now, I said that uh, we want to use statistical terms. Now, we need to note also that You know, we have said from the first note, uh, mu x bar is mu. Sigma x bar is sigma over square root n. So, statistically, we say that our random variable x bar is normally distributed. I don't know whether I was doing normal distribution with you or was it the other group? I think the other day we discussed uh, we discussed uh, some distributions with you. Let me check. I think if I'm not wrong. Yeah, this is for. Uh, yeah, this slide I used it with you. Now you can see. This distribution, which I was saying that. Was the normal distribution. It has a particular mean. Remember here mu the mean mu and it must have some variance. That is why there are some data values far from the mean on the right side and on the left side. So let me go back to our slide for today. So this random variable of ours, x bar, is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. Where am I getting sigma squared over n from? I'm getting it from the second note. We just square this. We square sigma over square root n. So this is the language we usually use most of the time. We say x bar is normal mu sigma squared. X bar is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. So remember the formula for getting population variance the formula for getting population variance 
So let me just illustrate how we can calculate population variance. Uh, consider, consider population, consider the following population, two, four, six, eight, and ten. Consider that population. And so how do we get population mean? Population mean is just the summation of everything divided by five, which is uh, if we add all that, because it's a population, then we are getting the mean. You know, it's not a sample. It's a population. So we are getting population mu, mean mu, which is equal to six. We add all of them and divide by five. And what about the population variance? The population variance will be given by one over five, multiply by two squared, two squared plus three dots plus 10 squared. And uh, minus 36 because uh, we are supposed to subtract mu squared and this will give us 8. 8. So of course the population standard deviation will be square root of 8. It is square root of 8. So that is how we calculate population variance and uh, population mean. So I will give you, I will send a question to your class reps where you will uh, perform some of these computations. Where you will perform some of those computations. Now, we have said that in the third node, x bar is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n. The next subtitle, sampling distribution, sampling distribution of the difference, sampling distribution. Okay, there is a question. Today I was wondering, huh? is it a question or what is that? No, it's not a question. Something to do with the calendar. Okay, let's go on. So I was saying that our next subtopic is sampling distribution of the difference of the difference between two sample means. Sampling distribution of the difference between two sample means. So, uh, this note number three is also the sampling distribution of X bar. It can also, it is also referred to as the sampling distribution of x bar. We usually say that x bar is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared 
over n. Now we want to obtain the sampling distribution of the difference between two sample means. Uh, obviously, if we are considering two sample means, maybe the first one is x bar one, and maybe the second sample mean is x bar two. So the difference between these two sample means is x bar one minus x bar two. Uh, so what we want to do is to say that x bar one minus x bar two is normally distributed with mean something and variance something else. Falling back on the third note, then if x bar is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over n, it follows that mu mu x bar mu subscript x bar 1 minus x bar 2 the mean of that difference in sample means will just be equal to mu 1 minus mu 2. So if we have uh, two different populations and we get the mean of the sample mean of the first population and the sample mean of the second population. If we have two samples drawn from two different populations and we calculate x bar one and we calculate x bar two, if we want to obtain the mean of the difference of the two, it is just the same as getting the population mean of the first population and subtracting the population mean of the second population. And then to obtain the standard error, the standard error of the difference of the difference between the two sample means to obtain the standard error of the difference between the sample means this one will be given by the square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2 I said that it is the square root of that quantity. And so now we can, and so now we have the sampling distribution of the difference between two sample means. Now we have the sampling distribution of the difference between two sample means that is x bar one minus x bar two x bar one minus x bar two is normally distributed with mean mu one
minus mu two and variance and variance sigma one squared over n one plus sigma two squared over n2. So that is the sampling distribution of the difference between two sample means. The format is the same as what we noted in the third part. X bar is normally distributed with mean mu variance sigma squared over n. And now the difference between two sample means, its, it's sampling distribution is normal with mean mu one minus mu two and with variance sigma one squared over n one plus sigma two squared over n two. So we will use some of these relations going forward, going forward, and we will see some calculations pertaining to the same. And so I will also, on this part, I will uh, send an exercise for you to apply this knowledge for you to be able to calculate mu x bar one minus x bar two, and also for you to calculate sigma x bar one minus x bar two. Uh, I think, is there a, a comment in the chat? I can look at that. I can look at it. 